I want to welcome all of you to our now almost first Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Berquist, co-founder of Connected Women of Influence, and we are delighted to bring this new webinar series to our association of professional women. Our webinar series are designed for you. You as a professional woman, you as a business owner or a woman owner running a company or an enterprise, you as a woman professional who is a leader or an aspiring leader as a woman in business. And our whole goal is to pick a series of topics and themes that, that support you in your goal to lead, to achieve, and to see, succeed more effectively in business. Our topic today, which is one that I'm very passionate about, is how to become a woman of influence. And this has a lot of meaning not only to me as a leader in business, but I think to many women that I, on a daily basis, come across female leaders and aspiring women leaders who share with me that they want to be more influential. They want to command more influence and power, if I can say that word but they struggle with how to be a more effective leader. So today I just wanted to kind of share some different fundamentals of being more of an influencer in business. And kind of the first thing that I wanted to hit on, I love this quote by Ken Blanchard. And one of the things he shared is the key to successful leadership today is influence and not necessarily authority. And one of the things I see with women so many times in business, just through our association, in conversations and discussions with other women on how to be a better leader, many times they get mixed up as far as what a leader means. And a leader is not really about your position or your title or who you are. It really is about the influence and the impact you can make in business and through other people. You know, as, a, as somebody who wants to have more influence, I know I do on a daily basis. I talk to women that want to be bigger influencers. You know, I think kind of starting off just of what influence means is, is important. You know, I mean, it, it means different things to different people, but influence from a definition is to have an effect on the character, the development, the behavior of someone or something. You know, it's extremely powerful and, you know, channeled appropriately, funneled appropriately. You know, there could be a huge impact you could make as a woman in business by having more influence. To take it even a step further, I think we as women in business want to be bigger influencers, and an influencer has an even greater impact. I think, number one, this is a much more powerful word, but as an influencer and, and looking at that as opposed to, let's say, someone you know, who wants to be um, of influence, an influencer is someone that has an impact and actually has an impact on something or shapes how people or things act or how things occur. And I know for our association, kind of what gives me as a leader purpose and influence to be an influencer is that I want to see women change, you know, their results in business. I want them to see and, and make a bigger impact with building bigger enterprises or becoming more effective leaders at getting the job done through not only their own efforts, but also through other people. So I hope all of you that are listening, and I see a few of you um, that are online with us, which I'm really excited that you've jumped on today, is that I hope all of you want to be bigger influencers. So that said, here are, at least I hope, some different ideas that you might have as an influencer and wanting to become a bigger influencer in business. And one of the first ones, and I'm going to just kind of like toss out some different ideas. I think there's many ways to be a bigger influencer, but I kind of went through and looked at the women that I interact with on a daily basis, what they share with me of some of their struggles, their challenges in being more influential and being an influencer in business. And, you know, we all talk about being persistent, yet I see women many times that it's like just at the point of when things might work, they give up. And so to me, this is probably one of the most important things to being an influencer is that persistence is one of the number one, you know, items of the game. You need to be persistent, not only when things don't go according to plan. Quite frankly, I'm like the, the poster child on that. <laughs> I set a plan, the plan goes haywire. I see women that have big goals and big ideas and want to be extremely successful. And when things start to veer, maybe not in the way they intended, or in some cases, the money doesn't come in like they'd like, 
they start to give in and give up. And I think persistence is one of those most important pieces that when the chips are down, we know we should always keep persisting and keep buggering on. Um, But, you know, a lot of women do give up. So being persistent um, on what your mission and your purpose and your cause is, is probably one of the number one things that women can do to be a bigger influencer. We also need to be determined, you know, and, and this is another area that I just, again, from the perspective that I see on a daily basis for women in business is being determined even when, as an example, if you are a woman who's a career woman and being determined is that things maybe through the culture or the company that you work for, things are changing, things are being disrupted, right? It's not business as usual anymore. Being determined is to kind of be determined and understanding what the goal is you're trying to achieve. You know, we can all be relevant. We can be influential. You know, we can be persistent. But determination is what kind of keeps us going, I think, to know that we're always going to strive to do the best we can do. Always make sure that when things maybe are more difficult or they don't go according to how we'd like or people, for goodness sakes, we, we are all in the people business. The times when people don't react or act like we would like them to, determination is what can get us through it. And I do think this is the part where we need to get out of our own heads and just remember that determination is what can get us through it, even if we want to be and try to be more persistent. Passion is a big deal. I think this one, I have to say, just for me personally, has been something that, you know, not emotion, but passion. In fact, there were um, some interviews I did with men in the past, and I remember one gentleman that I interviewed from my book, um, and he said, he goes, passion is great, emotion is not. You know, and I think for all of us, you know, passion is is very influential. Passion can excite people. If we're excited about what we do in business, if we're excited about what we do within our work role or our career role or um, who we are as a leader in business, passion is what, you know, gets people excited to want to follow you. Passion is what, you know, from my standpoint, if we like what we do and we can't love what we do every day, I get that. But being passionate about your purpose and what you're all about is a real tipping point, I think, for a lot of women, that passion, maybe when things are not going according to plan or or there's not money in the bank today, but there might be tomorrow, passion can drive us forward. It's what causes people to want to follow us and be part of us. So if you are not someone that is extremely passionate about what you do, I would encourage any woman to speak to other females that are passionate about what they do because it doesn't come easily. And if you can find and interact with somebody that is very passionate about what they do, you might be able to get some great ideas and how to incorporate that into your role and your profession or your business. This is another one that I see women that maybe they could do a little differently and that is being bold you know, or being more bold or being bolder. Let's go with that. But being bold isn't about being a bulldozer, right? I mean, there are some misrepresentations of whether women should be bold or not. I think this is absolutely critical to being an influencer. You know, this can be under that umbrella of thinking bigger, thinking more, thinking, um, you know, not perfection, but for we strive to perfect, right? That's being bold and thinking bigger. I just see so many women that you know, kind of focus in on, a, on on small and not wanting to be bold. You know, they, they either second guess themselves in their own role within an organization. They don't apply for positions that they clearly are interested in or clearly could take them into a whole other channel and lane for them to be successful in business. I see women business owners that would rather stay small just from the standpoint that they don't go out and try to get financing or they don't try to find funding or they don't try to rally a team around what their purpose and their mission is because they don't really kind of go for the bold, if I can say that. So being bold has many different meanings, but to me, it just says you always want to be thinking about the next step. It doesn't always have to be bigger, you know, and more of it, but it does have to be about being bold to always strive to perfect you know, always try to be relevant, always, you know, willing to improve and and specifically 
if you're a woman in business and you run your own company, it is always about tweaking, you know, tweaking your processes, tweaking who you are. If you're a career woman and you work for somebody else, it's like you need to be flexible and nimble and know that you don't make all the decisions, obviously. But being bold is letting people know of where your intention is. One of the words that I love about being bold is that it's not anymore about having a job. It's about actually managing your career. I mean, what are you looking for next? And a story that always comes up where women just aren't as bold maybe as men, and that is as a woman, as a female leader, there are studies after studies after studies that will show that women in particular will look at maybe a position or a function or a role that they want to play that might be a new position for them. And they look at the criteria of what's required for that position. And maybe they meet 80% of the job requirements. And a man, on the other hand, will look at a job listing and they'll say, well, I meet two out of the 10. So maybe only 20% or 30% of them. The difference is, and this is where being bold comes into play, is that women will not apply for the position. Men will. And I think for a lot of women, it's like if we can know it's never about perfection, but going after and being bold can really um, take us to new heights and being bigger influencers and being more influential. Another area for women, and this is where, at least for most women leaders, you know, sometimes we just can't think outside the box, if I can say that. I want to say think outside the circle, but sometimes we need to be more creative. You know, there's not always a one solution, and especially in business. When I see women owners, where I think creativity can come into play is, you know, when there's not enough money, you know, there's never enough money. I mean, as women owners, I don't know any woman owner that says I have plenty of money in the bank. I have plenty of money to what I need to do. Even when they get funding, you need to be creative in how to, you know, manage resources, not only money resources, but also people resources. You know, if you're always thinking that you have a lot of turn or you do have a lot of turnover, being creative is how can you find maybe a workforce that um, you can scale and actually look at being flexible with. I know for Connected Women of Influence, what we try to do is bring on women that really only want to do part-time work and they're wonderfully loyal. It's like they're, you know, really engaged in CWI because we kind of have a flexible work environment. So being creative is looking at where those trouble spots are for you and your career, your profession or your role in business. And if you own a business is to start thinking, gosh, if, if this is not what can happen, being creative to be a bigger influencer is about you know, what to work around. I know when we do anything in CWI, one of the things that we always look at is not if plan A doesn't work, it's like, is there a workaround or a, a second step that might work not as great, but at least as an option. And so being creative, I think, is a big deal. Being committed is kind of like what I brought up earlier, but I think more women in business need to be more committed to be influencers is that, you know, it's not easy being a, a woman leader, I think being committed is knowing that, you know, when you're committed to who you are and that you want to be a bigger influencer, you want to have more um, of, of influence, if you will, around your impact in business or your role and your profession is being committed means that we as women need to understand <laughs> that we are second guest. We as women um, kind of have double standards, right? It's like as women, what I always crack up at and sometimes cry with um, different women I come across is they'll say, I'm leaning in, but I'm not being heard. You know, I'm speaking up, but I'm, I'm still not taken seriously. And I, you know, I'm told to, you know, pipe in with my opinions, but now I'm tagged a bitch. And I hate that, you know, but being committed is that I think in this realm, when you are a female leader, you know, your influence and being an influencer can come from you being committed and adaptable to the circumstances and the situation. So as a female leader, if you're finding that you're speaking up, you know, your commitment is not only to exercise those activities so that you are more relevant, that you do have influence, but also be willing to um, that commitment to try new things, you know, try things a different way so that you get different results. And I'm sharing from the success stories I interact with in 
interacting with female leaders who are very influential is they will share and just say, you know, if this way won't work, I try something else. If that way won't work, I tweak it until I find the right avenue that works for me, whether it's communication, whether it's your system or your processes, whether it's dealing with employees, whether it's trying to take on and get a promotion at the career or the company that you work for. Those are the things that you can do to be committed. This is another one. I hear from women all the time who will say, you know, I need to change who I am to be a better leader. And I think being influential and being an influencer as a woman leader is about being authentic. You know, I mean, I've been <laughs> accused many times that I don't always follow the rules as it comes to being a professional speaker. And yet, I also can tell you on the same note that I've been hired as a professional speaker because I don't always follow all the rules. And I'm not saying don't follow the rules. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is be authentic to who you are with your values, your purpose, your mission. And when you are called to kind of work outside of that, some of the decisions or things that you might want to think about is, you know, you always come back to central focus, which is being authentic as a leader. You know, the most influential people that we can probably think of that are the public figures that are out there, like Oprah Winfrey, right, Sheryl Sandberg, some of these, is that they will say they know they're an influencer because they're so authentic. It's when we try to to be something we're not, that I think that diminishes our level of influence and also diminishes who we are as an influencer. In fact, it actually makes us not an influencer. It's just a copycat of somebody else. So, you know, for you, if you want to be more successful, I think, you know, find out, you know, and really dig down of who you are and be that and be okay with that. You know, and the other part too about being authentic, I think as a female leader, is that we also are not going to you know, have that kind of um, strike of engagement maybe with everyone. You know, we're, we're just different people. And so sometimes we hit the mark, other times we don't, and characteristics or personality, but, you know, never, never go away from being authentic. We also need to be brave as, we, as female leaders. And I think being brave is really more about the idea that we take chances. You know, what we never want to do and I see women all the time that, that are fearful. I get that way, right? I mean, I second guess myself sometimes, many times where I don't do something. And then I kind of get over myself and say, no, we need to try this. I need to be, I don't say be brave, but it's like, I do think I take that step when we try new things. You know, if you are someone <clears throat> who you know, you're not getting enough visibility in the organization you work with. It's like, try being more visible. You know, that's a brave step for you. For some women, it's more speaking up, you know, and not waiting for someone to call on you. For other women, being brave is about taking a chance and maybe looking into, you know, a different company and organization that you can work for. If it's a woman who's an owner of a company, and that's you, maybe it's that you need to figure out a better system and you can be brave and finding a way to ask for business more effectively, right? Because it is about asking. And being brave has many definitions. But I think all of us, if we look first to ourselves and say, how can I be more brave and how I get results, that can help us be bigger influencers because we all have a different way to be more brave. This one is interesting on being a better influencer. I have to say I was inspired greatly by one of our very new members in Connected Women of Influence, who just got done, and I will give her like extreme props, um, Sherry Berry, who is the CEO of a manufacturing business of skincare products, and she was one of our last Sue Talk presenters. And her whole entire Sue Talk was built on how to be kind and actually build in kind leadership. And it was probably one of the most fascinating terms and explanations I've ever heard is that when you are ever in doubt as a leader, and especially as a female leader, I think there's so much out there that says we shouldn't be kind, we have to be strong, we have to be powerful, we have to be bold, and it comes at a cost. And as a leader, you know, the more we can always take the kind focus, this was kind of the message I got from Sherry's presentation, is you can't go wrong. You know, you can still be firm, 
but kind. You can still be powerful, but kind. You can still be a badass, and you can still be kind. So from my standpoint, I think this is probably one of the most magical terms for us as women, because I think women, we do want to be kind, right? We don't want to be tagged, and I'm just going to say it, that our webinar series are, are, are badasses. We don't want to be a bitch, you know, but we definitely can be firm. We can be direct, but we still can be kind. And so I think any woman that can find that kind of that balance to be kind and yet firm and bold and determined can be an extremely powerful influencer. And this comes along the way that we need to be ambitious. You know, I mean, I don't see many women, and, and I have to say, some women are very repelled by this word. You know, they don't, they see ambish, ambitious as a bad word. I think ambition is fabulous. You know, if we don't know what we're trying to go forward for and be ambitious and try to grow a business that is whatever your answer and definition is, or if you are a career woman and you're thinking, I need to be ambitious to get ahead, I don't know where in the realm of women in leadership ambition got a bad name. Um, maybe for the middle part of the word is that ambitious sometimes equals people being tagged a bitch. But to be ambitious, I think we all want to grow and flourish and thrive. So ambition to me is something that is really important to a woman who wants to be an influencer and a woman of influence. This is one of my favorite words, but I do think in being a more effective leader and being a woman of influence is that consistency can be an extremely powerful thing. You know, if people know that, um, especially if you have a team of people that work with you, for you, or in support of you, you know, it's really difficult, I think, as a leader, but again, we want to be authentic here, is that when you're not consistent, consistent, either with your energy, your emotions, your passion, if you're on and off, if you're not consistent in being, let's just say, on time, you know, you aren't consistent in your message and your wording or in your actions or behavior, people will misread and it actually deflates your power as an influencer. So I know for us, we use this word pretty consistently in CWI is that, you know, it's always, let's be upfront with each other, but consistency is that we are here to support one another, get the job done. And I know through our association, we've used this word consistent on many ways, even in the projects that we do. And so for you as a female leader, it's like, take a look at how your behavior you know, are you consistent in how you act and what you say and the message that you're getting across? If you're not, um, then maybe there's a few things you can tweak so that you are looked upon and perceived as a more consistent, relevant leader. And this is really through actions and how you're perceived by other people. You know, I mean, silly little things, even in the manner of dress. You know, that you, how do you dress when you show up? You know, are you on when you're on? And, you know, you've got to find ways where it's like you're behind the curtain, you know, and you can have your own kind of, you know, time and all that and not being consistent. But when you show up for business, it is a really powerful piece is to be consistent. This is one I think that women have easy. Um, however, I will tell you in some of the conversations I've had among our association, is that, you know, when women do collaborate, when women are on boards together, when women are in group sessions, sometimes when women get direct, it's perceived as um, a diss. Or, you know, women, unfortunately, many times kind of judge each other, right, and assume where it's incorrect. I do think, again, if we come back to the whole kind leadership and being consistent, is that, you know, seek first to understand, then, you know, to kind of jump in. And women in collaboration, while I think we have this in our DNA to be collaborative, we also, in our DNA, sometimes really can't we get along better among women. And, and I'm going to share with you that, again, one of the things that came up, you know, over and over in some of the interviews I've done with men over the past few years is they would share you know, if, if you women, and I hate that phrase, you women, if you women would just support one another, you really truly, you know, would have, you know, just much better success in leadership and at the top and at the helm of things. And so while I agree with that, I think the question for any of you that are listening to our webinar is to say, you know, how do you show up? You know, are you collaborative? You know, do you listen to other 
let's just say women, you know, do you listen to their ideas? Are you kind about your approach back? Not to diminish what somebody says or judge what somebody says, but be supportive of others. And, and I have to say, unfortunately, I've been involved in a number of meetings that are women leaders in a boardroom and they get petty. They start trying to one up each other. Women get a little judgy with each other. And I'm not trying to go down a bad path. I'm just saying, I think being collaborative means that there's always support you can show. There's always a way, again, to be kind. And as women leaders, there's always a way to support the next person um, that might be a junior leader or an aspiring leader with you. And especially women in business. You know, I think some of the best ideas I've ever had have been because I've been supported collaboration by other women that want to give and support and serve. So be a better collaborator is my message. Confidence. We've heard this all over the place. You know, this is one of those where I'm going to say, you know, and I, I don't know what kind of backlash I'll get on this, but there are times when I go into meetings or times when we're taking on something or we're acting on a project that I find confidence is something that inside I might be shaking in my boots but I try to put on the appearance of confidence. And this is something I think that's hard because people go, of course, of course we need to be confident if we want to be an influencer. But I will tell you there are so many influencers I've interviewed over the years as female leaders and men leaders as well who will share with me that sometimes you just fake it till you make it. You have to put on those airs of confidence in the right places. It doesn't mean you can't be vulnerable in other scenarios where you are with, let's say, a group of people that are supportive of you. But confidence to me, it, it has many meanings. But for many women, you know, I think there's a time to choose where you're vulnerable and choose where you need to show confidence. And it, this is a big learned behavior. This isn't something that always comes innate in any one of us. I think confidence can be learned. And then the other big one for me is because we could take a whole webinar and talk about confidence. But I think the big thing is there are times when, you know, you aren't as confident as maybe you want to be. And you just have to kind of shake in your boots, shake yourself off and put the appearance on that you are confident, even when you may not feel confident, which, again, I'm going to probably get some great uh, interesting feedback on that one. Last couple here. I see women that are so wishy-washy, you know, in their decisions. You know, they, and this is, again, I think it's all, all, all two of who our, person, who our personality is and, you know, what's kind of in our DNA. But one of the things I've learned as a leader is that many times, you know, once the decision's made, it's made. You know, I don't veer back from it. Um, you know, if this is a decision today and then tomorrow I'm second-guessing myself, you know, that, that's not a way to be an influencer or a woman of influence. So as an example, it's like I think the message here is live with your decisions. It's like don't be wishy-washy. You know, this is also a learned behavior. You know, I think being decisive also means, and this is where we can be more collaborative too, is to listen to different options. You know, let people bring up ideas. Let those around you come up with solutions, but don't discount what those ideas are. Be willing to listen to them, but when you are trying to make the best decision you can, live with your decision. And, and you know, with your team, especially, if your team knows you're consistent, you listen to the ideas, you know, then you make a decision. I think being decisive is something that more of us as women uh, need to kind of tune into and see that there's an area here where we can improve and tweak who we are. The supportive part is where I just want to share as being an influencer, where I feel my, if I can say this, my power and influence has come into play that I never, ever understood until the last few years, is when all of a sudden you aren't being a leader, but you are supporting other leaders and potential leaders. And for me, women being supportive of other women to kind of, quote, help the next one in line, you know, offer resources to one another, offer to introduce somebody to opportunity or connections. Or, you know, again, I, I will go polar on this one for the genders and say men do this extremely well is 
You know, somebody says, hey, I'm looking for a million dollar fund opportunity. Um, there are men I know that will go, oh, I know somebody for you. I absolutely know someone I can introduce you to. You know, women maybe don't do that as well. And so being supportive is not only, you know, to help yourself, but, you know, really be a mentor and an advocate to other women. And I go ad nauseum on this one, but I think it is a big one that I never realized it can increase your influential power dramatically by supporting other women. And ladies, <clears throat> this is pretty much one of my last ones, but I do know we're going to do a webinar on resiliency. We all know that we need to kind of bugger through things that don't happen well or adversity or things like that. But being resilient, I think, is if you ever have a conversation with other women and it's in a trusted kind of inner circle fashion, you're going to find that we all, you know, have all kinds of adversity that happen to us, happen among us, you know, we get through it. But resiliency is that I think so many times I've seen women that just stop. I mean, they stop. They feel like they're a failure. They feel that, you know, the whole world is great. I mean, I'm going to share a story with you that, you know, we would have leadership luncheons and still do. But I remember one woman in particular quite a few years ago that shared with me, um, Michelle, you know, I come to our luncheons and I see these incredible women and I think all of them are just, gosh, they're so successful. They're so incredible. And I'm the only, I'm, I'm standing here going, I can't even, you know, hold a candle to them. And, and it looks like everything's perfect and wonderful. And I remember at the time not laughing, you know, at her or with her, but I just said, oh my gosh, you know, so-and-so I said, you know, when you get to know women, I go, we, we have a lot of, of war wounds and we have a lot of things that happen to us, but you know, not everything's perfect, not everything's done. And the more we can interact with women and just hear how women are resilient. I mean, I see women that transform themselves. You know, they've had something happen here and they twist and they take their career and they start a business. I've seen women who are in organizations and what they do is they definitely start looking around because they're tired of the culture or the organization they work for and they start that brave process and they go and find a different position. It might take them a few steps back, but then they're in a happier role. They're in a different position and they have the kind of culture that fits with them. And I think many of us have stories of resiliency, but are you as resilient as you could be? And the upshot of all of this, and then I want to kind of open things up to questions um, via our questions and answer place here. But, you know, being a woman of influence, again, is we all are women of influence in some fashion. I think the message I'm hoping I get across today on our Women Lead webinar is that many of us can and should tweak what we do, how we behave, who we are as women to be better influencers. And it doesn't take a lot, you know, and it doesn't happen overnight. So being a woman of influence, this was just my perspective. And I'd love to see if anybody has any questions or anything that you want to say, because I see a couple of them here. So I see, oh my gosh, here's quite a few. So I see one, um, one question here is that, you know, in the face of adversity, you know, <laughs> how, how do you, how do you change your career or role when you hate your company you work for? Wow, that's a big one. You know, I remember years when it's like I would drive up. I went through five mergers and acquisitions in my bank career. And I remember, I don't know, third, fourth, fifth one. There were, there were periods of time with each transition and each merger that I just hated the bank and the, the situation we were in. But I think for us as women to be a better influencer is about, you just know you may not enjoy it, but I got up every day, I did it, and I was taking action every day on something that I was looking into, what's my next move? You know, um, I know Oprah Winfrey is extremely um, visible and has a great word. It's not about, you know, making big changes. It's about just looking at, 
what's the next move you can make if the circumstances aren't great. So if you don't like your position or your company or the culture that you're working in, what's one step that you can take to kind of change and start the process to get in the place that you want to be? Would that be updating your resume? Would it be starting to reach out and talk to people that might be other influencers who could support you, you know, to try to find a different position or a different role, give you some advice if you've been with the company for a while, but I think all of us can just take one step. And you know what? I hope each of you has kind of a circle of connections that are women who do support you. And if you don't, there's programs and organizations and I will say like Connected Women of Influence that can support you with that. So great question. Um, here's another one. And somebody said, okay, I'm ambitious, but, you know, I have a problem with, I'm reading this, I have a problem with what ambition means. And I'm not sure if you can put something else in here as your question, but um, I'm not sure if I'm answering this right. But on ambition, I think each of us kind of knows what we're trying to be ambitious of. You know, there are some women I see that go, I'm happy where I'm at. And that's okay too. You know, but how can you be a bigger influencer or a woman of influence? Maybe ambition isn't the piece you need to focus on. Maybe for you, you know, it's being consistent, right? Or it's being more creative or being authentic. Because I do see women, especially in career careers and companies that will say, I don't feel like I'm myself. You know, every day I show up and I'm I'm not authentic because I have to be who I have to be. Well, maybe there's something you could get involved in at your organization or at your company that would allow you to be a little bit more authentic, knowing that you have to play a role and carry on and bugger on with your position or your function. I think there are those opportunities that allow us through balance to be more of an influencer. And I've got time for a couple more questions. My gosh, you guys are sending them in. I love this. I love this. Um, here's a question. How does one go from being of influence to an influencer? And, and my answer to that is it's going to be one step at a time. You know, I mean, being an influencer means how do people perceive you? You know, are you supportive? Are you collaborative? Are you persistent? You know, are people following you? It's like, you know, I mean, we talk about followers where people say, I want to be an influencer on LinkedIn, or I want to be an influencer as a thought leader, as a speaker, or a presenter, or an entrepreneur, or an owner. Those are all great, but those are big, vague words. I think for each of us, whatever our situation and position is, you know, we can focus on the next step. You know, look at all those things that I shared of being persistent, authentic, committed, creative, bold. Those are areas, and there's 20,000 more, you know, that you can do to take that next step to be a bigger influencer. And I think it starts with what's your circle of influence of the people you interact with on a daily basis? How can you create impacts through them, with them, on behalf of them? That creates influencer. And I am getting another question here. So it says, all of these points are so valid. I've struggled with not appearing too masculine in order to be bold, ambitious. But I've come to a place where I can still be strong and be feminine by collaborating and being authentic. No backlash from your comments here. Well, I would hope no backlash. I'm just teasing. Um, I think I, I'm trying to get, I don't think I'm telling anybody to be you know, male-centric here or, or focus on male characteristics. I think we can be passionate and bold. I think many times women have a hard time with these words, which are very male centric, right? I mean, this is what really changed things in answer to this question. When we had Sherry Berry, who presented her whole leadership, Sue Talk, on the kind method of leadership, which to me just changed my whole perspective, even as a leader. I think I can always be bold, but I'm going to be kind, right? And some people might think that dismisses them. So I'm not sure if I answered the question right here, but um, I think it's absolutely valid, you know, that many of us don't want to take on those feminine characteristics, or we do. We want to be more feminine. But, you know, what does that mean? You know, how can you choose those words? So if there's another question you've got there, Eva, let me know, because that's the, um, Eva sent that one. So last thing, I got two other questions and then I want to wrap up. 
we are not done. We are just starting these webinar series. I have to say, this is an exciting time for us as we are looking for bold, passionate thought leaders as women who want to kind of share their journey, their leadership advice. Um, we want women to share tips and suggestions on being a better business owner. So we really have a lot of different things going on for women. And I hope all of you um, will consider joining us for the next Women Lead webinar series because we will have these on a regular basis trying to be for women, by women, and influencing on behalf of women. So I thank you for your questions. And we will be back again soon with our next webinar on how you can succeed as a female leader in business. Thank you for joining us.